I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV, episode number 115. We're coming to you early Wednesday morning from Alter Ego Comics in Lima, Ohio. And we've, as usual, processed a giant stack of comics and whittled it down to uh, a handful that we highly recommend, although I could recommend more. Uh, I really enjoyed the majority of everything that came, the majority of books that came out this week. But I will start with Jupiter's Legacy, number one, by Mark Miller and Frank Quitely. This is being heralded as the greatest thing of 2013, and it is very, very good. Uh, Both of these creators have made a name for themselves doing great work, and to put them together when they've never worked together, to the best of my knowledge. Um, So to have Miller and Quitely team up on a book is a good thing. So this kind of has, in the beginning, it has a feel of a... Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or a, uh, you know, looking for this lost treasure, lost city, lost this. I don't even remember what it is. It's something's lost. <laughs> something's calling to, it's it's the actually a TV show Lost. That helped me remember it, because the island is calling to this guy. Uh, kind of the 1940s, may have been sooner, it's in the 1920s, 1940s. And there's a group of people that go out and they discover this island. And once they're there, they develop superpowers. And then we flash forward to uh, what is apparently the present, and the superpowered people have superpowered children, and they're all brats. <laughs> Many of them are brats. Uh, it has a feel, a, a little bit of a feel like Kingdom Come, the classic Elseworlds DC comic story, where the traditional heroes in the future of the DC universe have kind of fallen by the wayside, and there's a new generation of heroes that are very self-absorbed, and you know they don't care who gets hurt in the process of, of battling, And you get a little bit of that in here. So if you're a fan of Kingdom Come, I highly recommend checking out Jupiter's Legacy. Uh, But it was just really, really good. Uh, I'm usually not a big fan of Quitely's artwork, and I think I figured out why. I I don't like it when he draws people that I'm familiar with. (laughs) Like when His take on Superman is not for me, but his take on these characters works because I've never seen any of them before, and it's new and fresh and different. Three of my favorite words. And it was just very good. It's, it's another image title. It's another image number one. Expect it to sell out relatively quickly. So I would hurry in and pick up a copy today. Uh, next up, another awesome newer newer indie s- image series. Uh, we have East of West, written by Jonathan Hickman, with art by Nick Dragota. This is the second issue, and we both really enjoyed the first issue. Pimped it last time when it came out. And this issue I actually almost enjoyed more. Uh, the first issue was very setting-oriented. You know, they're dropping us into a completely new place with completely new rules, and it was a lot about throwing things at us that we didn't necessarily understand at the time. The second issue is almost entirely about character. It, it picks up plot threads from the first issue, but it really gives us an image and a view into these people's lives. And even though the, the world that they live in is entirely disparate from ours, even though some of them are <laughs> apparently mythological figures or beings that are not necessarily human, they make them very palatable. They give them motivations you understand, and they make them really likable. Uh, Hickman has has a great uh, economy of phrase. Uh, he uses a lot of epigraphs for the start of chapters or for the start of sections of the books, and uh, you can see that in some cases. Um, one of the new characters in here, he got me in like three lines. Like I immediately liked that character. He didn't say anything important about himself, but he made me really just care in just a very brief amount of information. So East of West is, is really shaping up to be a solid Hickman book in the vein of Manhattan Projects or in the vein of the end of the world. So check her out. Uncanny Avengers number seven is next up for me. And people either like this book or hate this book. And some people are kind of indifferent about the book. I fall squarely in the like slash love this book. It is, to me, the inheritor of the Chris Claremont X-Men. The inter- the interactions between the characters, the dialogue, is straight out of, of, of a Claremont Uncanny X-Men book, to me. And maybe I'm seeing things through rose-colored glasses because that's what I grew up on. But I love the interplay between the X-Men and the Avengers that are suddenly on this team together and supposed to be friends and teammates. And this is coming out of Avengers vs. X-Men where they were frequently on opposite sides of the battlefield. And let's face it, mutants and humans have never really gotten along. Uh, So now to throw them into a room and they're supposed to be a team, and Havoc is just really shining in this book. He hasn't had an opportunity to be a a lead character in a very long time. Uh, To see, you know, the mess that he's inherited with this team and how he's he's supposed to be leading it is a lot of fun. Uh, This storyline focuses on Apocalypse and the Apocalypse Twins, and so I don't know who they are. <laughs> this was a new thing for me. Maybe they've, maybe we've seen them before. 
Um, I don't know. But they're there, and the story does make sense, even though we're dealing with uh, Apocalypse and his extended family. So we've got some crazy stuff happening in here. We've got the the murder of a celestial, which has never happened before in the history of the universe. Uh, We've got some of the best dialogue ever, and allow me to read uh, from the the book of Uncanny Avengers. We have Wolverine saying, in in reference to the Red Skull, we don't take this Nazi down soon. A giant butthole's going to open up in the sky and dump bad times on everyone. I love that line. In fact, I tweeted Mr. Reminder last night and complimented him, and... uh, he did not get back to me. <laughs> he actually retweeted the tweet. So thank you, Mr. Reminder. Um, the artwork in here by Daniel Acuna is awesome. Acuna's style has evolved over time. I didn't really care for it at first, but it's definitely grown on me. I could go on and on about this book. The X-Men books as a whole are just firing on all cylinders, and Uncanny deserves a place right alongside all new X-Men and Uncanny X-Men and whatever other X books people are reading because it's, it's great. It really is. Uh, next up, still in the Marvel Now vein, I've got to give you a twofer. We've got Fantastic Four number seven and FF number six. Fantastic Four, well, both books are written by Fraction. FF Fantastic Four is uh, written by Mark Bagley, drawn by Mark Bagley. He makes the lines on the papers. And uh, they're just so good. I know I've raved about almost every issue of both of these series. Uh, Fantastic Four does something that I really enjoy in that it lets characters that have been around forever, I mean, the creation of the Fantastic Four is very near to the beginning of the modern Marvel Universe. We have seen more Reed Richards' smart stories than you can shake a stick at, and somehow Fraction is managing to make them interesting. Um, the, this continues to the end of the last story with uh, Ballastair and the end of the universe and the beginning of the universe, uh, some very Hitchhiker's Guide to the stuff, Galaxy going on stuff there. And uh, it was just really great. I mean, there were actually moments when I wanted to stand up and cheer just because they, they hit the character so well, you know, just one line sets it off and it makes you happy. It makes me, I enjoy reading this book. You know, there are terrible things happening. You read and his friends and family are essentially disintegrating at a molecular level, but they still manage to be, the book makes me hopeful. It makes me happy, and it's just an enjoyable read. And when it comes to happy, there are very few books that bring it as well as FF. Uh, this is still written by Fraction, art by Mike Allred. This is issue six. And what? It is not art by oh, Mike Oh, it's not. <laughs> well, there's looks, an Allred on here. It looks a lot. Laura colors <laughs> is it. Is she coloring it? Okay. It's that guy. Joe Quinones. Qu- Quinones. Joe, Joey. Uh, FF is sort of the other side of the story. This is uh, second and third tier Marvel characters just filling in for the FF. You know, the, the world is not in imminent danger. They're there to punch an occasional monster in the face, but mostly it's about how they're broken people trying to run a school and not let the wheels come off until Reed and Sue get back. And this, again, is, is really fun. We've got the Yancey Street Gang uh, giving crap to... Darla? She thing, Darla Daring. I had Daring, I didn't have Darla. And we've got a, a mystery involving uh, Bentley and Medusa, and just so much fun and great Moloid t- adventures. I don't know, frolicking? <laughs> Cross-dressing? <laughs> There's some of that, too. You know, uh, the Herbie Doombots is amazing. Just the whole FF is a book that makes me smile, and that is something that is in rare occurrence lately. So Trust me, Josh doesn't <laughs> smile much at all. He smiles more. In fact, someone asked, why is Josh always smiling on the video? He only smiles when we're doing the video. (laughs) You've been in the story. You know. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Yeah, pretty much. FFs are awesome. (laughs) FF is awesome. (laughs) It's one of the books that I could have easily talked about today as well. All right, last up for me, uh, Ultimate Comics, Spider-Man, number 22. And it should be no secret by now, I love this book. I've loved it from the beginning. Uh, I loved the Ultimate Spider-Man book with Peter Parker instead of Miles Morales. And just Bendis, this is Bendis's magnum opus, as far as I'm concerned. He's done a lot of work, but he has been the sole writer of Ultimate Spider-Man for nearly 150 issues, when you count in the first series and now the Miles Morales series. So, a lot of stuff goes down in this issue, and there, this is a major, tur- major, major. Neither one of us can talk today. This is a major <laughs> turning point for Miles Morales. Uh, if you've been following the book, or if you're even remotely curious about uh, the character of Miles Morales, you want to pick this issue up. Uh, in fact, I, I would say good luck finding it after the first couple of days when word gets out what happens in this book. Uh, but it's it's kind of classic Spider-Man with a modern twist, and this character, this this young kid who is now the Ultimate Universe's uh, Spider-Man 
it's it's something that young readers today need. They don't always need to be reading about older characters and their older problems, and and they need to, to be able to relate to somebody. And this character, like Nova in the Marvel Universe, and give me another teen hero. Anybody? Just Nova. Nova and Miles Morales are the only teen characters out there. Uh, but these, these characters are relatable to, you know, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds. And that's what Marvel needs to be doing. That's what all publishers need to be doing. In addition to publishing content that, that we want to read, there needs to be stuff that younger people want to read too. And Ultimate Comic Spider-Man definitely fits that bill. This is one of the books that I uh, easily recommend to parents or grandparents coming in looking for something for their, their youngling to read. Um, artwork by Sarah Pacelli is outstanding. Bendis and Pacelli basically nailed this issue. Unfortunately, this is Pacelli's last issue. She's leaving to go on to other things. Um, I, I'm guessing Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> with uh, with Bendis. But David Marquez is coming back next issue, and he did another bang-up job when he filled in for Pacelli earlier in the run. I feel like I'm babbling at this point, and I probably am, but if you have not read Ultimate Comic Spider-Man, pick up the first graphic novel, check it out, uh, you will not be disappointed. It is such a, a solid, good book. This is what the Marvel Universe should all, should be all about. Just for the record, whenever someone says magnum opus, I just picture the cartoon penguin with a Hawaiian shirt and a Tom Selleck mustache, and that's why they may have been giggling while he was talking. <laughs> See? He's smiling, <laughs> laughing, having fun. Uh, and as Mark says, uh, we were talking about teen heroes, and although really what you were aiming for was more of tween, that 12 to 13, 14 range. Uh, but speaking of Marvel heroes with our teens, or late teens, uh, early 20s maybe, depending on the team, we've got Young Avengers, <laughs> written by Kieran Gillen and art by Jamie McKelvey. And I've just love this book so much. <laughs> uh, it, it's got great kind of interesting layouts. The, the layouts in this book are not like anything else you're going to see coming out of Marvel, although FF had a few that were very choice this week as well. And uh, it's just so good. We've, for, this is the first issue where we've got the entire Young Avengers team, or at least the team members we've been introduced to, all in the one place, all trying to solve the problem, and all being horrible screw-ups because they're teens and that's what life is like. <laughs> uh, we're starting to see, one of the things that really concerned me was the, the first part of the series, we saw young Loki, and he was very much in the vein of Journey into Mystery young Loki, but if uh, you'll recall how that series ended, that should not be the case. Uh, essentially, I, I guess it's not a spoiler for a book that came out months ago, young Loki's mind was wiped and he was replaced with adult, evil, sinister, mustache twirling you know, Loki, which was incredibly heartbreaking if you read the series. And so he had seemed very kind of fun and similar to the young Loki, but clearly it was all a facade because it's clearly we're seeing Loki manipulating the members of the team and throwing out those little hints and using the dark magics and just, it's so good. It's, it's coming to a, a boil and we're getting a great book out of uh, Gillen every month or two times a month sometimes because it's Marvel. So Young Avengers, awesome read. Indeed. So another stellar week for books again. We could have done the lightning round today, but uh, we just didn't for one reason or another. Uh, hopefully we'll have another stellar week where we can do that again soon. Free Comic Book Day is right around the corner. That is Saturday, May 4th. Please plan on joining us here at Alter Ego Comics from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. We will be giving away thousands of free comic books for readers of all ages. And we will have uh, comic book creator Laura Innes here who is uh, from the Columbus area. She's done work for Nickelodeon and Scholastic, and she has her creator-owned book, The Dreamer, which she'll be signing copies of. And we've got, what else, a huge dollar comic sale, half-off graphic novels. We've got uh, food in the lineup now. We've got Red Baron Pizza. And, Red Baron Pizza? Red Baron Pizza will be here with samples. We've got our neighbors up the street, the Fat Cat Diner, doing homemade ice cream samples. Uh, we've got live music by the Radio Pilots and the Van De Veldes, those guys. I don't even know how to pronounce that name. But there will be live music. And what else? Oh, our costume contest. You can win a $100 prize package. Uh, and then we've got costume characters that are going to be here. Batman, Superman, Wolverine. Get your picture taken. Hear ye, hear ye. Ladies and gentlemen, pictures taken with costume characters. It's going to be an amazing day. And we hope you can join us Saturday, May 4th, 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. here for free comic book day. That's it. See you next time. <laughs>